Hello friends, this is Dr. Savara Patwardhan from Nanda Deepai Hospital, Sangli, India. And uh, in this video, we'll be dealing with a very interesting case of nanophthalmos with axial length of 15.93 mm. You can see the aqueous depth is just 1.91 mm. Angles are closed. And the uh, IL power calculated by Barrett's formula is 57 diopters. Of course, for the small eyes, no formula is exactly accurate so we have to check multiple formula and I decided to go with the Barrett formula in this particular case I also checked the Haggis formula Hoffer Q formula and Kane formula Hoffer Q gave IL power of almost 60 diopters while Haggis gave IL power of 50 diopters so you can see the anterior chamber depth is very very shallow this pupil is small patient has already suffered attack of angle closure and there are cyniki formation i tried to stain the anterior capsule before but afterwards i realized there was an inflammatory membrane because of previous angle closure attack over the in the pupillary area so that's why the staining was not successful I tried to stretch the pupil but the overall working space in the anterior chamber is very very small so I decided that I need a larger pupil size and the best device for such a shallow anterior chamber is B hex pupillary expansion device it's a hexagonal device made up of nitinol very easy to insert this is a special 23 gauge curved forceps which comes for insertion of this. Now because it is a very shallow anterior chamber with very minimal working distance between endothelium and anterior lens surface, I am finding it little bit tough to maneuver the B hex ring but it is important to make those flanges go underneath the iris so that uh, it hooks the iris at 6 places and uh, keeps the pupil dilated to around 5.5 mm. You must have observed that during making of even incisions, I had to be very careful not to touch the anterior lens surface or iris. It was that shallow. So after putting this ring and after I had removed the inflammatory membrane, I decided to stain the anterior capsule again underneath the OVD which I had already injected. Now the OVD which I am using is a combination of hyaluronate and chondroitin sulfate just like viscoat. I use the hyalucoat and underneath that I am staining the anterior capsule because for white cataract I need a stained capsule. You can see that I tried to wash the OVD but the IA probe was going underneath the B-hex because of no space there. So I carefully manipulated it over the OP-hex ring and remove the OVD so so as to remove those dye which is, might be affecting my visualization during capsule rexis and again I re-injected chondroitin hyaluronate combination to make some space for working and I am going to use my standard 5 step technique as I try to puncture the entry capsule you can see that the lens is moving indicating that zonules are probably more elastic or might be there will be some weakness of the zonules but the capsule appeared quite tough i decided to go ahead with the other steps of intumescent cataract like aspiration of the intralenticular fluid to reduce the intralenticular pressure which will assist me during completion of the capsule rexis so it is important to aspirate that out from both sides and avoid any fluid pockets in the lens this is already a very small eye and uh, the lens is intumescent so there is a high risk of going this uh, capsule axis might go in the periphery i am stroking the peripheral cortex so as to flatten the anterior lens surface and then I have shifted to micro capsule axis forceps because it's very tough to keep uh, 
control over this flap using the cystitome. And it is important that when we use this microcapsule rexis in a case where the zonules are weak or more elastic, you have to avoid a centripetal force like this. So when you try to pull it centripetally, the zonules might break. So that's why I try to move this capsule rexis tear tangentially as far as possible. That uh, avoids the chances of zonular weakness becoming more and causing subluxation. So the capsule rexis was successful. I could achieve a good size of the capsule rexis here. And I'll be going ahead with phaco emulsification. I have kept the exposed phaco tip little bit smaller in size. Normally I use 1 mm exposed tip. Here it is around 0.5 to 0.75 millimeter because uh, it's not a very deep entry chamber. So obviously if I keep the phaco tip exposed a little more, uh, my irrigation sleeve might not enter the entry chamber completely. Now I'm doing entire procedure of phaco here at just 50 centimeters of bottle height so as to avoid any excess fluid going into the uh, eye and causing possibly a fluid deviation. So I want to keep the IOP low during the procedure and the nucleus as expected is soft. This is an intumescent cataract. Though the patient's age is around 55 years, the grade of the cataract is just grade 1 to 2 and I could achieve good division of the nucleus and then phaco emulsification with very minimal phaco energy as the nucleus is quite soft. I have already coated the endothelium with good OVD in the form of chondroitin and hyaluronate. So I am very careful about endothelial protection here. I was watchful for the posterior capsule during the last piece removal. And in this case, I tried to keep the anterior chamber form, well formed so that uh, there is no collapse of anterior chamber. Uh, we must remember that in these non-ophthalmic eyes, there is always a higher risk of choroidal effusion. And if there is a significant shallowing of the anterior chamber during the surgery, and if the AC remains shallow for prolonged time during the surgery, the choroidal effusion might increase. So that's why I try to keep the anterior chamber formed. The cortex removal is being done. Again, I am not using very high bottle height to avoid fluid deviation. Trying to take out all the cortex to avoid any post-operative inflammation in the eye. Because this eye has already experienced inflammation because of the angle closure attack. So any residual cortex will further increase the inflammation post-operatively. Now in post-operative regimen, I am planning to give systemic steroids as well for a period of two to three weeks to reduce the chances of coronal effusion. And uh, I'm also planning to put the patient on topical atropine for the same reason. So this is the customized 57 adapter hydrophilic eye well. And I'm going to use a larger cartridge for this, which goes through three millimeter. So it's a kind of lenticular design. There is a central high aisle power lenticule. And that is done to reduce the overall thickness of the IOL. This is a butterfly type of open cartridge. And it's important to make sure that haptics don't get stuck in the with the plunger and I have already enlarged the incision to 3 millimeter and the IOL can be injected uh, very easily. So looks excellent. The IOL is placed in the bag. Looks very steady and well centered. So now it's time to remove the B hex ring. It is done using the same 23 gauge forceps. So we just have to dislodge the B hex ring, bring it up over the iris. So try to 
all the flanges which are above the iris and just pull them in the center very carefully it's a very thin device and can be removed from a very small incision even side port incision can be used to remove it and very flexible device and as you saw it maintained the pupillary dilatation well during the surgery so after removal of uh, B hex I am going to remove all the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber as well as from the bag uh, it's very important to reduce the post-operative inflammation the anterior chamber depth still appears quite shallow you can visualize there is a peripheral PI which is present but it's possible that the patient has already reached a chronic angle closure stage so it will be important for, to continue anti-glaucoma post-operatively and watch over the intraocular pressure. Patient surgeon may need to go for a glaucoma surgery later. So let's watch the follow-up. The surgery went quite well and this is a tough case with very small eye and intumescent cataract with angle closure and a customized IOL. For more such surgeries, do visit our website recotraining.org.in. Also, you can submit videos so that we can publish it on our website and do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.